Hello YouTube and welcome to a tutorial where I'm going to show you how to get your PlayStation 4 controller to work on your PC. Um, for this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to get your PlayStation 4 controller to work with anything you want, um, any game, doesn't matter um, if it has Xbox controls or not, which is a big difference from most tutorials and mine. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to be downloading two files. I have them both in the description um, and you're also going to need WinRAR if you don't already have that. So first of all, you want to extract your SCP DS3 driver package um, and open that folder up. And I have it right here. So once you get that open, um, you're going to have three installs there. You're going to need to install all of them. Um, unless you're on Windows 8, then you don't need to install the .NET one, but you do need to install the rest. And then you're going to need to open up the Xbox 360 controller drivers folder. Now you're going to need to install the one of those that suits um, your OS. I'm Windows 7 64 bit, you could be uh, any of those. Um, so the next thing you want to do uh, is just go back uh, and you're going to go to SCP server and open that up. And then you're going to go to bin and open that up. Now you're going to open up um, what's called Zadig folder um, and then you're going to open up the application and run it as administrator. Alright, so here we have our Zadig application. Now what we need to do is click device and click load preset device. We want to pick DualShock 4 and um, what you'll see here might be wireless controller, it might be something else. If it's not wireless controller you need to click options and click list all device and make sure you do select the wireless controller. Now you're going to click install driver. I already have mine installed so um, I'm not going to do that step. Um, and that's it. Your controller is now set up to work without Bluetooth. But Bluetooth is a lot better um, and if you have a Bluetooth dongle or Bluetooth built in, which most computers do these days, um, then you're going to want to do the following step to get Bluetooth set up. You're going to click load preset device again and you're going to click Bluetooth this time. Now you're going to click options, list all device and click it again to get it back. Now you're going to click Intel um, Centrino, wireless Bluetooth, or whatever your adapter is called. Um, it's just going to say Bluetooth probably in the name. And you're going to click on that, and you're going to install that driver over your old driver. Once you have both of those drivers installed, you can close that egg, and you can go back into um, the main bin folder. So in the bin folder now, I've got our drivers. We want to click on the SCP driver application and open that up. Um, and you're going to get this dialog box here. Um, we're just going to drag it out here and in this dialog box you're going to have three checkboxes at the bottom. So you want to click the Bluetooth driver checkbox um, and you don't want you don't want to install that because we just installed a better driver or a newer driver um, with the other program. And now if you're on Windows XP or Windows Vista you are going to click the force install button. Once you've got um, your options pr uh, correct then you're going to click install and when this installer finishes, you can close it. Um, so now you're going to open up your SCP monitor. Um, mine automatically goes in the toolbar, but when I double click it there, it pops out like this. Now you should see um, your host address here and your pad one and see that it's charging connected by USB. This is great. Your control is working just fine. Um, everything's golden, but you want uh, Bluetooth. So what we're going to do um, is we'll just leave that open for now. We're going to open up command prompt. So if you don't know how to get to command prompt, you just type in CMD in your search bar um, and it'll pop up right here. Now you're going to run that as administrator as well. And really in this tutorial, run everything as administrator just to be safe. Um, it's better. Okay, so now when you have command prompt up, you're going to type in the following. You're going to type in uh, net space stop uh, space quotation marks scp space ds3 space service and quotation marks and click enter if you did it right it should say the scp ds3 service uh service was stopped successfully it will say service twice in a row it's kind of weird like that okay um now what you want to do is you want to take your playstation 4 controller and you want to unplug it okay now you want to press um, the share button and the PlayStation button and hold those. And you're going to wait until the top of your controller flashes. 
Now your controller is in pairing mode. So you could just put your controller aside, um, and at this point you want to go to DS4 pair um, application, and you just um, that'll start up. It'll do some things, and then you click the start button. I just leave it, um, let it do its thing until it's done, and uh, I think it might go one more time, uh, but I'm not sure. So just just wait, give it a, a good uh, minute or so to finish. Um, so I think it's done now. Close it. All right, and now your PlayStation controller should have stopped doing whatever it was doing. And you can just click the PlayStation button on there. Okay, and it's trying to connect. So now what you need to do, the reason why your PlayStation controller can't connect, um, and the reason why everything says disconnected, is you need to restart that service. So you're going to go back into your command prompt, which you've hopefully left open, um, and you're going to press up to get your old command back. And then you're just going to delete the O and the P and type in ART instead. So you're starting the service instead of stopping the service. Press enter again, and the service is started. Now, when you press your PlayStation controller button, it connects. And as you can see here on your SCP DS3 monitor, your host address is there and your pad is there. So that's it. It's golden. It works. Um, and we can put it aside again um, and close the command prompt. Um, and we can close our uh, uh, whatever folder, and we can close the DS3 monitor. But before we close the DS3 monitor, something else we should do. Um, right click on that and click configuration down here in the toolbar. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna give you the option to change your DS3, uh, DS4 light bar brightness. So you can uh, turn it all the way off, um, you can lower it, you can raise it, you can make it blinding if you want. Um, I'm just going to put mine around 5 uh, and, and press OK. So as you can see, my light's on, but it's quite mild. It's not going to bother me, um, and that's just fine. You can disable it if you don't want it to drain your battery. That's perfectly valid. So finally, um, now our, our controller should work with any Xbox setup game. So it's amazing. Um, you play an Xbox setup game and your PlayStation 4 controller should just act exactly like the, play the Xbox controller would. Now, that's not uh, enough because we want to play Minecraft, we want to play um, Starbound, we want to play whatever um, with a uh, controller. So, next thing we want to do um, is we can close our monitor now as we want to start up XPatter. I have it right here. And when you start up XPatter, you're going to Start a new profile. This might automatically come up for you. And you're going to click Sticks. Now you're going to take your PlayStation controller again. And you click Enable on the first stick. And you're going to click Left and Up to set it up. And then as you can see, it's um, it knows what the, the controller is doing just based off the Up and the Left input. Now you're going to do the same thing for the other joystick. Detect that. Um, left and Up. And there we have it. Now you can do the same thing for your D-pad. Um, enable that. Up on the D-pad, down on the D-pad, left on the D-pad, right on the D-pad. Now your buttons, you're going to want to press the X button, the O button, the triangle button, the square button, the share button, the PlayStation button. Oh, maybe the PlayStation button doesn't work. The options button, the front triggers. And I'm not sure if you can use the pad. I guess not. So uh, you can also click the thumbsticks down. Okay. And that will give you all of your buttons um, there lined up. Now, if you want, you can, like, you know, check which buttons which before you drag them around. I like to put my, my buttons um, for the thumbsticks in the middle of the thumbsticks. Just I think that, that helps me visualize what's what. So your triangle button, you can drag that up here. Your circle button, your square button, uh, your X button. If you forget which is which, just click the button and it'll light up. It's very simple. So you can set them up like a normal controller. Now your options button goes right here. And your share button goes right here. And your triggers you can put up here at the top. Okay, now we have um, two more things to add. Our actual back triggers. So you're going to click enabled. And you're going to hold the left trigger and hold the right trigger. So now you have uh, R2 and R1 both both set up. Okay, and we have our D-pad. 
we have our joysticks. We've got everything working now, so we're just going to kind of rearrange it a bit. Um, and there we go. So now all you have to do is click OK. And here you have all of your controls set, ready to get set up. So mine's a little bit messy. Uh, I was just trying to do it in a hurry. Now when you want to set up a button um, on your controller, all you have to do is click on that button and you click whatever you want on your keyboard or mouse to set it up. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to do the mouse ones first because they're a bit weird. So what you might, might want to do is um, set up your mouse uh, to be your right stick um, and to be your looking around. Um, now you can do that with the um, mouse buttons or mouse uh, right here. You just click left for left, up for up, uh, right for right, and down for down. These are your um, middle buttons. If you can go left and right, if up and down, those are those. Your middle button, your right, uh, left button, and your right button. And those you're probably going to make your trigger. And then button four and button five if you have those. Um, and then, of course, you have your entire keyboard here on which you can set up appropriately to map this keyboard or this keypad to whatever you want. Now, once you're done, you can just save it. Um, I'm going to save mine as uh, random. Okay. And I'm just going to quickly go into Minecraft here um, and show these controllers working before I do anything else, uh, before I end this tutorial, just to, to show you that um, it's all good and it works as intended. I've only set up the movement controls, so I'll only be able to move around um, left and right. Whoops, I started two Minecrafts there. We'll close the other one. There we go, we just have one now. So we'll just do that in full screen. Oh, there we go, full screen. Okay, we're just going to go single player. Click on the first one that's there. And we're going to play with our PlayStation control. And we can look around. And we can move around. So we can use the D-pad or look around with our joystick. So there you have it. Um, it's uh, This is how you set it up to work with any game whatsoever. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, you can like and subscribe. If you have any questions about this, I know that this kind of thing, usually there's a lot of questions that come with it, a lot of um, issues people have. Um, be sure to comment, and I'll try my best to help you. All right, thanks, and have a good day.